Question three then. So here we have uh, another situation. Uh, once again, the exact situation doesn't matter. This question actually just boils down to a density question and a moments question um, and a, a bit of Newton's laws. So don't panic when you see different situations like this. So the, the ball here is made of density of that material has diameter five centimeters. So first thing to do, as soon as you see five centimeters, that's 5.0 times 10 to the minus two meters. Make sure that you use base units. So we need to find the weight of the ball. So to find the weight of the ball, we need the mass, which uses the density equation. Uh, the, we're gonna be needing the volume of the sphere, which is located there on your formula sheet. And we're gonna need the density equation, which is located there. So volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed. And remember that's a, a diameter, so don't want to get caught out there. So that's four thirds pi times by uh, 2.5 times 10 to the minus two all cubed, which is equal to this calculator. So we've got four divided by three times by pi times by open brackets 2.5 times 10 to the minus two to the power three. So that is equal to 6.5448 dot 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 times 10 to the minus five and the units there are meters cubed. And I've done it in meters cubed because I changed that to meters there. If you do this in centimeters, it's gonna be an, a pain changing centimeters cubed into meters cubed. Um, you just gotta think there are 100 times 100 times 100 centimeters cubed. So there are a million meter, centimeters cubed in a, in a meter cubed. But we don't need to do that because we changed the base unit straight away. M is equal to the volume times by rho, the density. That's just rearranging that density equation. So the mass is equal to 6.5449 dot 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 times 10 to the minus five times by the density, which is 8030. 8030 gives us this value. So 0 0.5255. And then W is equal to mg, the weight of something, mass times gravity. So the, that's, sorry, that's in kilograms. I need to write my units, don't I? Um, 0.5255 dot 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 times by 9.81 uh, gives us 5.155 newtons. And it's a show that question so that you always have to write it to at least one more decimal place than they give it there. Okay, next we are looking at uh, the distance from the pivot to the ball is 12 centimeters. Calculate the moment of the weight of the ball around the pivot when it's horizontal. So the, they're trying to put a little trick in here, which is you've got to remember that the weight of the ball acts through the center there, so that the distance to the pivot there is of course 14 and a half centimeters, not 12 centimeters. So you've got the moment is equal to force times by the perpendicular distance to the pivot. The force is the weight, so that's 5.155 dot 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 times by the perpendicular distance to the pivot. Again, we want to convert it into meters because it will make everything easier if it's all in meters. Um, so we've got 12 plus 2.5 all times 10 to the minus two to convert that into meters. So uh, bring back my weight and then we need to times that by 14.5 times 10 to the minus two gives us this. 
So that's 0 0.74758 Newton meters, dot, dot, dot. Um, and then, so the, what, how many decimal places should we do it to? We should do it to two sig figs. 0 0.75, the unit is Newton meters, and that's to two sig fig. And um, although it's unnecessary in this question, and they don't give credit for it, um, I would always put the direction of the moment because it is a vector, so I would put anti-clockwise here to show that you understand that moments have direction. So the spring is attached to the distance of eight centimeters from the pivot, and it has a stiffness of that, 100 newton meters. Calculate the extension of the spring when the rod is horizontal. So you may assume that everything else doesn't have any um, impact. So there's going to be two moments here. There's going to be that one, try and twist it down that way. There's going to be a force up there. So that's going to be the force in the spring pulling it upwards. The moments must balance. So the principle of moments. states that the anti-clockwise moment must equal the clockwise moment for equilibrium, which this thing is in. So the anti-clockwise moment is this value here. So 0 0.74758 dot, 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 must equal the clockwise moment. Well, the clockwise moment is going to be whatever force we have times by that distance there, which is 8.0 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So we need to divide that by 8 times 10 to the minus 2, gives us a force of 9.3448 newtons. Then we need to think about the, how much extension of the spring that's going to be. The force is equal to the spring constant times by the extension. So we have the extension is equal to the force on the spring divided by the spring constant, which is Hooke's law, which is there. I've, I've written X. They've used delta L. Um, so that is equal to 9.3448, etc divided by 100, so that is just 0 0.093 meters to two significant figures. So 3.4, before an earthquake occurs, the line being drawn on the graph paper is horizontal. Explain what happens to the line when an earthquake is detected and the frame of the seismometer suddenly goes down, rap, rapidly accelerates downwards. Well, all of this is going to move downwards like so, but the heavy ball here has inertia, which means that it will need a force in order to accelerate it downwards. There's nothing providing that force initially, because it's not attached to the floor, which is moving downwards. So there's nothing providing that force, so the ball will stay still. If the whole thing moves downwards and the ball stays still, then if you think that's the paper there, the whole thing moves downwards and the ball stays still, the pen actually moves to the top. So it draws a line going upwards. So if the frame moves down, the ball will initially not move due to its inertia. Okay, so there's nothing accelerating it initially, so therefore it's not going to move. So the line on the paper moves up. So that's really important. Paper goes down, line on the paper therefore goes up because the ball has stayed, the pen has stayed still. So the line on the paper moves up. Then 
the spring will return the ball to the new equilibrium position. So what do I mean by that? Well, think about it. What's happened is if this whole thing has moved down like that, the spring has actually become compressed and it's going to want to move the ball back to the middle again. So what's going to happen is the ball's going to move back to the middle, but it's going to overshoot and it's going to oscillate backwards and forwards until eventually it goes straight back to being right in the middle again. So after a while. So, um, so the pen will move down and oscillate about the middle of the paper until the, the oscillations uh, until the the pen reaches a, a new equilibrium until the pen and ball, I suppose, reach a new equilibrium back in the center of the paper again. Okay, I think I've probably gone into a little bit more detail than is required for two marks, but um, I think that shows a full understanding of what's going on. Right, question four. We've got this information about this radioisotope thermonuclear generator. It's a method of producing electricity in remote locations, such as on a space probe. Um, this is dead easy GCSE stuff. You should know that an alpha particle is a 4-2, and then you just need to make it balance. So that's got to be 234. Only 6% of the energy from the decay is used to generate electricity. Calculate the rate at which energy is transferred um, f from the plutonium. So it's 100 watts of electrical power. So we need to think. So the 0 0.06, that's 6%, times by the total amount of power that we produce is equal to 100 watts. So x is equal to 100 divided by 0 0.06. So that is um, total of x is equal to 1,666 uh, watts. So uh, what we want to do it to, let's see the two or three significant figures we don't know. So I'm going to write it to three significant figures, 1670 watts to 3SF. It has a constant output voltage of 32 volts. Calculate the current. Again, dead easy. We need the equation for power. So power equals VI. Now, so rearranged, I equals P of V, which is equal to 100 divided by 32. Plus 3.125 and the units are amps, so 3.13 amps to 3 SF. Calculate the maximum number of components, each of resistance 45 ohms that can be connected. So we can do this in multiple ways. We can work out how much current each of them would need and divide it into that, or we could work out the power. I'm going to do it with the power. So P is equal to V squared over R for each component. <coughs> That's that rearrangement of your power equation. So that's going to equal uh, V was 32. So 32 squared divided by R was 45 ohms. So we've got 32 divided, divided by, sorry, 32 squared divided by 45 gives you a power consumption of each component as 22.75 watts each. So we've got 100 watts in total, and we've got 22.75, which gives us 
answer of 4.39. But of course, we need to put a whole number in there. So it's got to be four components. The alternative is using a solar panel. A typical solar panel installation on a house provides about 1,000 kilowatt hours of electricity each year. Right, so this is just a converting unit. So first of all, we need to convert 1,000 kilowatt hours into joules, and then we need to divide it by the amount of time in a year in seconds to find out what its power in watts is. So we've got 1,000 kilowatts, so that's times 10 to the three hours. So we need uh, to times by 60 times by 60. So that is the energy in joules. And we need to divide that by the time. Sorry, I'm, what I'm using is P is equal to the energy used divided by time. That's an energy and that's your time there. So I've got one year, 365 days, 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds. So that is T in seconds. So that cancels with that. So we've got a million divided by that. So we've got one million divided by 365, divided by 24, which gives us about, well, gives us exactly 114.155 dot dot. So that's uh, what we've been doing things to 3SF. So 114 watts to 3SF again. Okay, the maximum intensity of sunlight at the surface of Mars at its equator is similar to that in the UK. Estimate using your answer to here, the area of a solar panel needed to provide an average power output of 100 watts on Mars. Give your answer to appropriate order of magnitude. Right, so we just need to make an estimate here. We need to get in the correct ballpark. So we've got 100 watts that we need a typical solar panel on a house roof provides about 100 watts. So it's the same. So we just need to think about how big a house is. So there's my house, a stunning drawing. If we draw a solar panel on the edge of the house, I reckon that your solar panel might be about two meters by maybe five meters or something like that. So two by five is equal to 10 meters squared. Different answers are acceptable there, but you just need to justify a little picture like that. Well, I'll show you. You need to get in the right ballpark. Okay.